It's time for Clubhouse Chatter. Here's Norm Ordez. Hey, that's right. Hey, we are on the last day of Brian and Norm's 15 Days of Christmas. And so today's gift package is a great gift package. It's two VIP tickets to Gordy's Highway 30 Music Fest in Filer, Idaho, June 24th and 25th. Two days, um, you get drink tokens, you get free food. I mean, there's a ton. Also involved is an autographed CD from Jim Campanis Jr., and it's the Cottonmouth Kings. He played guitar on on the song Sink or Swim, and Jim was uh, gracious enough to donate an autographed copy. Uh, plus, you get some swag, Clubhouse Chatter swag, and some Gordy Music uh, Fest swag. So I'd like to give a quick shout out to the Andy Nauman family in Jerome, Idaho. Andy was um, a high school teammate of mine. He was three or four years ahead of me uh, in Kimberly, Idaho. Um, He tragically passed away uh, Sunday night, and um, he will be missed. So with that said, we have the most interesting man in baseball. And so what you saw on ESPN the other day, or actually is MLB Network, um, Lenny Randall. Lenny, how you doing? Ciao, Norman. Necessary to parler italiano, inglese, portuguese, francese. Or shall I speak Portlandese? We could speak Portlandese here. So we're outside. We're up in the, the wine, the hills up in Amity, outside of Amity. So, uh, man, how many, how many languages do you speak? Only five today because I'm working on my Portlandese. It has a little accent to it. I have to get my shirts starched. I got to get those uh, lager shirts. Uh, I'm a little short right now. So, Brian, what you don't know is Lenny played for the Portland Beavers. Oh, yeah. Good town, great people. In fact, I might have family members up there that dropped me off when I played up there. Didn't know that I was related to them. They might still be there. Well, really? So what years What years did you play in Portland? We had the year when the guy used to have, remember the promotion where a 7-Up bottle was in the middle of the field and a guy would jump out of the helicopter? And land in a big bottle of Seven Up. I've seen Those that. Those of you got to remember that. Oh my God! Okay, we had every every game was a prank, a, a, a gimmick. <laughs> we had midget softball. <laughs> we, we, we did a lot of lot of strange things uh, with the promotion of the owners at that time. It was fun. Civic it was Stadium, like Charlie, Charlie Finley stuff in Portland. Yeah, and you had the Multnomah Athletic Club out there in right field. And, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, ah, man, I miss that. You know, it's a soccer-only facility now. The Portland Timbers play well, there. It was a soccer team that played when we went on the road. The Timberlands. Yeah, Timberlands. the Portland Timbers. Yep. Yeah. And Timbers. so yeah, they, they, were. they turned it yeah. into a soccer-only facility. And now they play a little bit of football. But Portland doesn't have a baseball team now. Outside of Portland and Hillsboro, they have a, a single-A club that's in the Northwest League. And it's, it's kind of sad because – Portland is a baseball city, I think. Well, maybe we ought to start one up. I want to come up there March 1st and scout that area. I know. We were talking about that. I would love to get you up here. Uh, I can barnstorm. There was a team up there, a guy on the Jays. I think the Jays, something Jays, Portland. Yep. Yeah, I saw him on Facebook. So. Oh, you saw him? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to reach out to him, so. And there's a pitcher named Reglione. I'm trying to I tried to get to Italy. He signed with another team in the Can Am League, and also worked with Sparky Lyle with the Yankees. The pitcher, right? Paul Reglione. Yeah, he's a six three or six five right hand pitcher, mm-hmm. and he a uh, former Kansas City Royal. He lives in Portland. Try to get him out that way when we do our clinic. So your baseball career. I mean, yeah, man, you. You know, they hit it right on the head when they call you the most interesting man because, I mean, you speak so many languages. You, you tried your hand at, you know, at comedy. You know, you tried your hand at singing. Um, and, you know, on top of that, you are you were a heck of a ball player. I mean, you don't get to the major leagues by being an average ball player. I mean, you got to be pretty good. And something that Brian doesn't know Brian, he played for Bobby Winkles at Arizona State. Bobby is one of our favorites. In fact, I talked to Bobby on Sunday. Oh, 
Paul Winkle. Okay. Yeah. Wow. He's 19- in uh, La Quinta, in Palm Springs. They have a home down there by him. Goes nine holes and goes home. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he called me up the other. He called me up the other day, and he started talking about, um, what the heck was it? He he was talking about playing handball or something. And really? so yeah, like better now. And he was oh, like, good. he was That's like, good. you know, you always beat me at handball. I'm like, Bobby, you got the wrong guy. And so, oh, wow. so I'd explain to him who I was, and he goes, Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you now, Norm. How you doing? Oh, but I was okay. so, okay. it was awesome <laughs> that he called me, and you know, wow. I mean, he remembered who I was, and so he he is he's quite the guy. Uh, now that was my coach for 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 the three years at ASU Arizona State. And him and Frank Kush were just awesome with letting two sport athletes play. J.D. Hill, Danny White, uh, Bump Lewis. I mean, we, we had guys that, that could have played NFL or, or, or even NBA or uh, MLB. And it was great that he had the vision to go, as long as you're in trouble and you're on the field and you're training, I'm not worried. <laughs> <laughs> and you keep your grades up. And I remember Reggie Jackson recruited me in mean, South Bando on Rick Monday. And they were there. Uh, Rick, he was there, Reggie, as a football player. And he was not on a um, baseball, on a scholarship. And he couldn't take the circle in the ring thing. And Frank Kush goes, look, if you can't take it, you got to leave. Now, I'm going to call on a number, and the bull in the ring is going to be five or seven. You've got to turn around and be able to hit it. And we all had to do it. DBs on the DB at a wide receiver for a turn. And Reggie cried. He just couldn't take it. And he left. And everybody went, where are you going? I'm going to go play baseball. I have enough of this. And he went over there, hit like three home runs in batting practice. And Winkles goes, okay, I'll work it out with Frank. We'll get you in and see what happens. And uh, we'll just let you play this season. And, and he hit like 15 home runs in a month. Wow. You know, in a month in college, you know, since you game schedule. So all of a sudden, Rick Monday, Vando, Rudy, I mean, half the team was going to the Oakland A. Mm-hmm. And, I, and they left me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just going to the world. I'm not going to play with you guys now. We're out of here. <laughs> they were all drafted one, two. Like Monday was first, and then... Uh, I think Vandy was four and Reggie was in the top three or something like that in the nation. And they ended up going to the World Series in, in Oakland <laughs> in about a year or two. And Reggie went to uh, 49 home runs right out of college. <laughs> got, got a little arrogant, but uh, he, was, he was the man. He was, he was the man. I was uh, in the collecting cars. <laughs> collecting cars. <laughs> I was chatting with Cammy uh, Cammy Dyer, who is Duffy Dyer's oh. daughter, and. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, we're friends on Facebook, and Duffy's been on the show before, and we were chatting a little bit. And um, mm-hmm. Duffy says hello, by the way. So oh, uh, from your New York Mets yeah, days, yeah. and yeah, so he's awesome. so what was what was the highlight? Do you have a highlight of your baseball career? My highlight was going to practice. I mean, I was just happy to play. People asked for all these details of in the cycle, going four to five, still in. To four bases in the World Series. Just playing. The highlight. See, people don't really get it anymore. To be able to be blessed and physical enough to get out there and play something you love with passion, daily basis, and you actually get a cookie and a soft drink and a bowl of cereal for it. Mm-hmm. Come on. It's it's just not even getting better than that. So the highlight is there. I don't remember stats, and we played for the love of the game. Absolutely. We played to win. We played hard. We bunted. We squeezed. We did things beyond the call of duty because of Ted Williams and Billy Martin and Joe Torrey and, and Wally Hurst. I had the greatest uh, manners and coaches, Willie Mays, Maury Wills. Uh, uh, my God. Come on, Joe DiMaggio. Yogi. You, 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 had, you had Yogi, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, how, how much better does it get? I've had the best of the best worlds. And I didn't abuse it. I, I picked all their brains. I remember Ernie Banks going, look, Lenny, after you finish here, I want you to go to the Luchas, and we're going to teach you to sing. I'm going, what? Well, first you got to invest in my bank, and then I'm going to teach you to sing. Raven Bank, Ravenwood Bank. I'm going, Fergie, what kind of guy? Because I, I left Texas, and Fergie Jenkins was my roommate here. And I look, is, Ernie, is Ernie real? He goes, Ernie has spirit and spunk. He's a old Negro League Kansas City Monarch player who lives for today. And if you hang out with him, 
like hanging out with Michael Jordan. <laughs> I go, okay, uh, all right, so whatever. And Ernie was, and Billy Williams was the greatest thing that ever happened to me in Chicago. Outside of, this, you know, baseball was the business side of, of the sport. And he was just a phenomenal person. So the personalities that I was around in my career, it was phenomenal. You know, your Dick Allens, your, your uh, Fitz Petersons, your Mickey Mallows, your, yeah. your Billy Martins. I mean, I, I mean, we've caught fish together, ate frogs together, and did things that no one else. I mean, can you picture post game frog hunting in Kansas City? I, I actually I can. And, I and mean, Mickey Mallow. I've I've been a clubhouse manager before, and so I actually, you know, I've actually oh seen God, players yeah. do stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you mentioned Fritz Peterson. Fritz Peterson is a friend of the show. He's been on a couple of different times, and yeah. uh, Fritz Fritz is a hoot. Fritz is out of the box. See, see, we're, we're not guys that just just to uh, then you know run the first, run the second. We go, well, maybe we can just go straight to second. Why we gotta go to first? <laughs> Well, I mean, we just didn't do the ordinary things. He didn't pitch the ordinary way. Right. His personality off the field, and his mind was creative, and it, it was in genius mode. Mm -hmm. You could say Andy Warhol mode, or you could say Picasso mode, or Van Gogh mode, or Norman Rockwell mode, or uh, Leroy Neiman mode. But he was creative. And right. those Spielberg guys, and those Bloombergs, and the guys that were around were not just ball players. We're all, I mean, from Bon Jovi to Kevin Costner to Edward James, almost those those were our homies. <laughs> so we had a sports career and then an entertainment career after the game. Right. You know, you know, post game with Joe Namus. Come on, I'm Muhammad Ali. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's chat post about game with Earth Quit on Broadway. Oh we wow. Oh yeah. So so. So you're a Seattle so, Mariner. And, and yeah. and that ball hit down third base line. So the rumor is is okay. So you were either shouting at it or blowing on the ball. <laughs> all of the above. All Whatever the above. It took all it, of the above. I yelled at it. I blew at it. It worked. I, 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 I had that breath that day. It worked. It, that is like one of I I think one of the greatest moments. I mean, we're we're looking at a picture of it now and. Um, I have seen that clip many, many times, and I laugh about it every time. And everybody's reaction, everybody's reaction, though, is hilarious. I mean, you just walk off and, you know, like... I, I had no clue to this day. I'm still kind of, you know, people have to remind me that. I, it was, you're in zone, like the zone of this show, and you get in that mode, and this is all you want to do, and this is all you think about, and everybody else is cracking up. And you go, well, why is everybody laughing? And then Julio Cruz and Rick Alba, I go, well, look at the big screen. And you go, well, what do you mean? Well, why are they laughing? Why is he coming out? I'm like, what, what's going on here? Why is he pissed off? Why is he about to have a seizure? He goes, <laughs> Lenny, don't you freaking know what you did? I go, no. The ball went foul. That's it. In the rule book, it's foul, foul, foul. You know, change. There's no rule. Yep. So what are you going to do? And he goes, well, we got to make a rule up. Let's just make a rule up right now. <laughs> so, they made up a rule on the spot. Kind of like the NFL. I'm sorry, I didn't have to go there, but uh, <laughs> uh, they made a rule on the spot. <laughs> that is awesome. And that now it's a lady Randall no blow rule. So I twisted it. Don't blow it. Go to college. I'm giving scholarships. <laughs> there you go. So I don't know. Did you guys have walk up music back in your day? Did I do what now? Did you guys have walk-up music when you went up to bat back in your day? Well, yeah, I had uh, their superstition in New York, and, uh, and then I switched to uh, uh, Isn't She Lovely, and then I switched to uh, You Are the Apple of My Eye. Because <laughs> you, you seem like such a apple. funk guy, you know? You seem like a, a sly well, Family Stone guy. Know, or Yeah, with well, different teams, you have different things. Like, you know, in Texas, I was hanging out with Charlie Pryor. Right. So oh, I there you go. go. Country, I had to go country. <laughs> and Charlie, Charlie was a heck of a ball player at one time. A heck of a ball player. Yeah. Did you know that? Wow. Did you know that, Brian? Charlie, Charlie Pride Charlie was, Bullock, I Brian. think, yeah, double A. I think he got as high as double A or triple A, I believe. Yep. That's a good guy. Or the field off the field. Yep. 
That's there, crazy. There's a lot of guys that had music in sports. All the Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can name. Listen, I'm about to put together a show in Vegas on the 4th and 5th, and I want from Bernie Williams to Shaquille O'Neal to Kobe Bryant, everybody that's rapped or thought they rapped, the athlete, right. a concert, ball players only. <laughs> that's funny. Hey, Bernie, Bernie can play. Can Bernie rap? Okay. Oh, he plays the guitar. Oh, he so plays the guitar. Good. He can flat out play. He's pretty good. I don't know about rapping, oh, but what is what is Brian do? Your assistant here, Norm? Brian, uh, Brian, he's a, he's a school teacher and uh, he's a former sports radio guy, and so um, you know we uh, we hang out here on Tuesday nights at his home studio in his garage, and uh, we talk baseball with guys like you, and you know I think I got the greatest job ever you know i don't get i don't yeah. get paid for this you know and i don't you care won. to get paid for this because you know i have a passion for the game of baseball and i want to spread it worldwide and you know my grandfather played a, a little bit you know went to spring training with the cubs one year got cut um you know i remember playing as a kid in kimberly idaho and Man, I just love everything about the game of baseball. And, you know, I'm so blessed because I get to talk with people like you who just, oh, you know, man. strengthen that passion for me. And um, we, wow. it's pretty awesome. We, we did a camp in Sandpoint, Idaho, and in Moscow, and in um, Radford, and um, Beach River. Right. Had the, we had the, had the Globe Trotters there for every sport. In Priest the River? Stuff. Yeah, Priest River. Yeah, to an annual. Wow. Priest River. Yeah. And it was packed. We had uh, about 170 kids. That's awesome. And we could buy them all around. And each, whatever sport they liked, we, we had a, a, a camp for it. A, a super camp. Right. So the area is, is very, there's a lot of athletes. There's no, there no, is. They all look. Yep. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. Yeah, there's a ton of athletes here in Oregon as well. And, uh, you know, I mean, it would be, you know, it'd be awesome. You know, we'll be checking in to getting you out here. I know you go to Medford, um, but getting you up here in the Portland area, you know, that would be kind of fun. Um, What's still the Portland is nice? Is the stadium still there or is it used for soccer only It's now? used for soccer only now. Okay, so what park would you recommend, Parks and Rec Major guy? Come um, on, you know, park. Wow, I mean, you got Volcano Stadium in, in Kaiser. Um, you've got right. Hop Stadium in Hillsboro. Uh, you know, you got a couple of the college um, fields that we would we would use, and so there's there's tons. You got Portland and University of Portland. Uh, you know, you got like Lewis and Clark. There's colleges around. There's some of the high schools that got nice nice facilities. And so we okay. definitely don't lack facilities, you know, and they're, that's for true. the most part, they're all turf now because of the rain oh, here in awesome. the spring. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so let's change gears right. a little bit. And I want to talk about baseball in Italy. Mm -hmm. And this oh, is yeah, what, this is what really interests me. And so I was on, you know, Clubhouse Chatter in its early days and its infancy was in on a Israeli sports network for a year and a half. And I ended up interviewing half of the uh, WBC qualifying team from Israel, and it just took off. In Italy, you know, I know Italy, you know, Italy is known for soccer. Italy is known for basketball as well. But there is baseball in Italy. Yeah. yeah tell us a little bit about it. Well, for nine years I played over there, and I, I, it was a phenomenal experience because all the guys I just named, the managers, were military, NGO, Natuno, Italian soldiers, you know, and they are Sicily, and are airline pilots or Navy or Army. So my coaches would talk about that, and they'd go, Lenny, if you ever want to die somewhere, a place where, and, and, and dedicate something to your country, go play in Italy and go to Anzio and Natuno because those are the greatest, great grave diggers baseball players ever. I go, what? You kidding? It hurt my ear. I was on the Olympic team and I met some of the Italian players and the Cuban and Puerto Rican and so forth. I met every country, 31 countries. So I said to them, I said, one day I'm going to come over and play in your country. And they go, well, if you do, we'll, we'll take care of you. Don't even worry about it. So I start planting seeds. This is in college, uh, Olympic games, Pan Am games. And, uh, and when I had the chance to go after I was kind of Board with the uh, American scene, I wanted to spread my wings 
to other countries. I wanted to go see what was in Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and Australia, and, and Canada, and I went over to Italy. And I played for Natuno for, for uh, seven straight years, won three bad titles, had fun, uh, found my youth, brought over Fergie Jenkins, Craig Nettles, around the floor, King Lanjo, Gary Carter, uh, Butch Bent, and brought about 15, 20 guys. And they all lost their prize sports, and I'm still looking for them. <laughs> they loved it. It was the most phenomenal experience they ever had in their lives. And I'm going to do it again with your group. If you got 10 guys, 15 want to go over, I got a special rate. It's 558 round trip. <laughs> Five-star hotel is 40 bucks a night. So for like 1500 you're there for 10 days. <laughs> That's not bad, Brian. It's Brian. Bad. Brian's it's eyes. He's, Brian is like, hey, I think, I think a trip to Italy is in store here. <laughs> oh, everybody else's ticket is twenty one hundred dollars to three thousand. It's ridiculous. So my our rate, our connection, are phenomenal. And you're on the ocean. You're on the water. And just, uh, he saw the uh, the uh, thing uh, from the uh, show. Yep. Pretty sure. So it is a hospitable people. Uh, it's like coming home, basically. I don't know what town you're from in Idaho, but pitch you that in the, like a homecoming. And 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 you don't burn out. Right. And you, and you live the Viva Loca. You live for the day. And it's a, amazing cities. Milan, Bologna, Verona, Padova, Rimini. I'm talking to Rimini now because they want my son to leave the NFL and come play in Italy. Bradley Randall. And he's going to do it. We're going to quit. The Vikings, quick, which taxi brought all that jumping around, and just be over there for the studio and have a life. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, you get an inside scoop. I shouldn't have told you that. I'll That's fine. <laughs> we're, we're here to talk. You know, you, you dropped, you know, you dropped Ken Landro's name. And yeah, so, my dad, my dad was. My dad served 21 years in the United States Army, and we were stationed in Fort Bliss, Texas for three of those years. I remember growing up as a kid going to El Paso Diablo games, and Kenny Landro was one of those players. Um, Kenny Landro, Carney Lansford, um, and and a few more, you know, Floyd Rayford. And I remember for a, a homestand, I was selected through the military as a bat boy for a home series. And I remember being down on the field and and just chatting with Kenny Landry. I was maybe, what, nine, ten years old? And, yeah. you know, to this day, I mean, Kenny, you know, all those guys, Floyd Rayford, you know, they gave me the time yeah. and day. And, I mean, just great, yeah. great guys. Yeah, him, him and Dom Dufer trained Bradley Randall at the Southern Academy, the MLB Academy in uh, L.A. area. Nice. Uh, El Camino. And he's just, I took him in Italy, too. He, he, when he was on the water, you know, we had, you know, a break. We don't, see, people don't understand this. You only work about four hours a day in Italy. You wake up at, let's say, seven or eight, and then you have a tort, a little pastry here, and a cappuccino, a express, a forte. And then it gets you to 12. And to tw- at 12, you do like a five course meal, happy pasta, dietary, ragu, spaghetti, pescatori, and then you have your salada and, and go for a little gelato, uh, ice cream or whatever. And then you sit there four hours from 12 to four, and you either make kids, watch the Pope, or watch soccer, okay? Or you take a nap. And then at five, you get up and uh, go back to work for an hour, and you're done. And then you <laughs> eat again. <laughs> I think I'm in the wrong business here. <laughs> <laughs> you eat again, you eat till eight. Wow. You know? And then after eight, you walk. Everybody walks the beach, the ocean, the shops. It's packed. All, it's, it's like an invasion. And you're walking off what you ate, basically, because you're eating a five course meal you know, every day. And, and everything is fresh. Day. Everything is fresh. And it's like, guys, I'm not making this up. Eleven fifty, sometimes seven dollars, sometimes five seventy five. And you're like, okay, what's the catch? But <laughs> what's the catch? And then they're throwing in wine for free, and you go, know, whoa, whoa, hold it on the vino. <laughs> and the guy goes, these are the grapes, these are the grapes of the Pope and God. Oh, okay, well, that's, that's okay. Then. <laughs> and, so, they, and then I'm the alcoholics. I mean, at 12, they have a little shot of Lambrusco or uh, Zimbendale or uh, uh, Asti Somani, and, and they're drunk. It's called spirits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
and you but you don't abuse it. And I, I'm not even a drinker, but it's like if you don't, it's an insult. <laughs> right. Right. So it, it's an amazing uh, culture that has a lot of sophistication, a lot of uh, boys in class. I remember going to Bologna and uh, Remini with medals, and as you walk the beach in the ocean, they're reading newspapers, and everybody from Spain, France, Germany is butt naked, practically. Hmm. And my guys couldn't handle it. Folks' eyes fell out of his head. I said, <laughs> calm down, Bobby told him, calm down. You guys are drooling. So they punched newspaper holes. You had a newspaper in front of them. So they punched two big baseball holes in the newspaper because they couldn't take it. They were staring at, like, Christy Brinkley and Brooke Shields and Beyonce and J-Lo's. And, they, and, <laughs> and so I go, guys, breathe. Breathe. That's funny. Breathe. Okay. If you can't take it, go back to the room. Act like it's a painting. It's an art form. It's just the way it is, this culture. Where in America, you'd be arrested. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a different it's different over in Europe, definitely. I remember yeah, growing, I remember it, living in Germany for four years, and I remember it being different as well. And, and the, so... And then you, and you play hard. You play, you know, it's about a double-A, triple-A level, depending on which team you're in. And about four or five other guys could play in the major leagues and the rest are, you know, fringe. But then to be able to come to America, like I'm trying to find an Ectomagio Gaz or half an hour. And I talked to Dusty Baker last night. And Dusty goes, Lenny, I'm in. When are we leaving? Can we do an exhibition game in February at the end of the spring training and play the, and play the match? So I'm talking to Paul Podesta and I know it's over fall. You got to let me know, you bring in a minor league team or a major league team? Or are you bringing uh, what a taxi squad? I, I don't know, but Dusty's in. <laughs> so we might have the first world class exhibition game in their history, like Pittsburgh and all those NFL teams are doing on there. Right. We might have the first one, guys, in February, May. That'd be cool. And uh, on, on February, March, I'd love to have. In Italy, wow. Italy is. I mean, you know, their WBC team. Of course, you know they did quite well in this last this last tournament. You know they had a you know a bunch of American um, you know players with Italian heritage, of course. But there's also a couple of you know Italian players on there as well. Um, what fan wise? I know when you were playing, you know you would what ten fifteen thousand in this yeah, in the stadium. Easy. Easy. And then Easy. For, 15, 000, yeah. for a while, Small you know, it, yeah, it kind of died down. But is it is it starting to pick up? Are are the Italian um, Italians are they starting to kind of fall in love with baseball all over again? I was embarrassed this year. You saw the video, yep. and it was like I don't know, maybe twelve, fifteen people there. Yeah, it's kind of like watching a game even, in Bakersfield. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> And the families weren't even there. I'm like, okay, this this is not a good sign if your family don't want to see you play. So uh, the caliber needs to change and re be restructured, and that's what I'm trying to help work on for the whole city and the whole town and, and the whole league. And I think when I played, it was five American players, you know, right. from uh, you know Rick Waits and uh, Pete uh, Carcone and. Uh, Bob Glass. I mean, there's guys that could play. He's a major league guy. Uh, Joe Ferguson and Harry Chappis and Bob Pate. And these guys had four to ten years in, uh, in the big league. And and then uh, it changed to two. Hmm. Now the invasion is Cuba and Venezuela and the uh, Dominican Republic. Yeah, the Latin and, countries, and, yeah. You know, yeah. And they're like uh, little queens, <laughs> Alamars. And uh, little, uh, you know, if you, if you understand what I'm saying here, they're like a rods. <laughs> is there <laughs> is there an influx of like the Asian countries, like Korea and Japan, as well, and Taipei? Are are they starting to play more over in Italy as well? I'm trying to bring a Japan team now. I'm talking to two teams. Uh, one of my Korean uh, uh, guys, Brian Hong, was trying to do a developmental Korean ball. But see, they've cut the amount of they call them straneros. You can only have two on a team mm -hmm. or three on a team before June, and then maybe four max. And then you got to cut it back to three. And it has to be an Italian pitcher pitching on Friday, you know, on Saturday, American, uh, and then on Sunday back to uh, an Italian. So 
Hmm. If you get a pitcher, you know, if you get an everyday player, you, you're better off. But if you get an everyday player that can pitch, you can, and you know, you can do something different. Like, for example, if if Sean Green were to come over there and pitch and go to right field and play first base, or Johnny Damon, hmm. <laughs> right? Even though I'm out the box, but they could do that and get away with it, pitch four or five innings, you know, and and, and make it work. And uh, and that's what I'm trying to get them to see that side of you don't need a 40 man roster; you can win with 15 guys. <laughs> right. How many teams are How many teams are in the league over there? It went from 20 to eight, and that's what's sad about it. You know, you got your in your big cities, uh, Bologna and and, uh, and uh, uh, the Tuna has two teams, Rome and the Tuna, and then you have your uh, Rosetto and Palma and uh, Padova. And uh, San Marino, and no, and no cities are big cities. You know, they they draw. They just call me now to do some clinics and music concerts to get people back into the stadium. Because right. you're going to have to hit the younger market with some other uh, venue other than, than baseball. So if I get you over there, Norman, you and Brian to do a pregame Zumba festival, you better tune up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that would be awesome. <laughs> That would be awesome, you know. And I, I, I have such, you know, I have such um, a passion for, you know, spreading the game worldwide. I mean, baseball's been good to me. I've worked with the Parks and Rec for 20 years uh, here in McMinnville, and you know, I've done everything from umpiring. You know, I prep ball fields on on Saturdays, and it's just, a, it's just, it's a pure love of the game. And um, you know, and I, I, I want, you know, I want to see it thrive in. You know, everywhere. You know, I know there's yeah. places that it's not going to thrive in. Well, but you know, Brazil well, it, it, and Israel and. Well, here's another thing. Yeah, the Israeli team asked me to, to coach them, and uh, one of the guys, um, uh, he owns a basketball team. See, my nephew, my nephew's Ty Sandy, and he played NBA and he played the Kings in UCLA and he did right. three seconds the last shot. So he played over in Europe for Percy Tudor and Bologna. And his agent goes, Lenny, I want to bring it. I want you to bring baseball. I want to bring baseball over here. An Israeli guy named Anton Marsh wants you to bring the Israeli team to Rome. <laughs> okay. I said, there's a lot going on right now in, in that region. But, you know, I'm not, I don't really don't want to go there. Even though I went to Jerusalem and did the pilgrimage and lived in year in Masada and, and did the, uh, the whole um, galley and and Galilee and all that. It's all the sycamore tree. And I said, now, if I can get some holy employers, some holy rollers, you know, come over here, I'll right. feel a lot safer because I'll introduce them to the Pope and then we'll be blessed and we'll have a great program over here in Italy with no drama. You know, because when you guys finish training with me, you're going to dominate the European Cup right. or the World Cup. Because my, my, my teaching is aggressive. I don't believe in taking a strike three. You guys have oh, heck no. I don't give it bouncing up there. You got yep. point. I don't like guys looking and arguing on fire. You know, steal bases, you know, steal cars, you know, steal hubcaps, you know, steal signs, and you're going to win. And you're right. going to have fun doing it and laughing at the other team because you're going to dominate with swag. But you're not rubbing it in. It's just kind of a Billy Lupinella kind of Yankee thing, okay? It's kind right. of a, a, a cardinal thing. You know, it was like the Mariners when when Blue Pinella and Griffey and A Rod and and uh, and, uh, and uh, Martinez, you know, there. it was. You know that when you got it, you got it. Right. So if you play the right way and you play hard, small ball, you have to get on run. You can win with just contact. Kansas City you know, Royals, you know, baby. David Eckstein, Kansas City Royals. Kansas City Kansas Royals. Kansas City Royals is a phenomenal uh, uh, series. I'm a Giants guy, and, you know, I worked with the Giants um, eight years, and, you know, as different things, you know, from, you know, security in the stadium here, over here with Salem Kaiser, you know, to helping with video um, pitchers and hitters and stuff like that. But, man, last year, the World Series this year was so exciting to see Kansas City do what they do, you know, and it's about yeah, time. It 30 years, 30 years coming, yeah. and they played baseball the right way. I want to see all the underdogs like Toronto and Kansas City. And I mean, who's who's the under under the radar team that you could think of right now? Can you name three that would just change 
Can and I, I know you're going to say the Cubs. No, okay. actually, no, the Cubs are. You know, I, I'm going to go with, you know, I, my three, you know, would be the Astros. I've been talking about the Royals for the oh. last eight years. And, okay. um, you know, I I think, you know, the Rangers. I mean, you know, I know everybody's got some talk, you know, talk they had a rough season, but man, you gotta watch out for those Rangers too. They're they're crafty. Well, three years ago World Series Rangers, am I right? Kind of sorta. Of. Yes. Yes. So that's kind of fresh, you know, they've had a run even though after you know, when we were there seventy two we and we were dying that we were always in the playoff race with Oakland and then we one game out and everybody went fishing. So it was kinda of like <laughs> They're hungrier now. You know, we were hungry, but I think there was a, a push to, to be on the map. Like, the Cowboys put pressure on them. Right. <laughs> and I, I so couldn't I pick think... the Cubs. The Cubs have spent so much money on ball players, but they've also done oh it from within as well. You know, yeah, I do. mean, yeah. so, you know, Epstein over there, man, it's hard not to like uh, the Cubs. It really, it yeah. really is. So you want Cubs and Texas Rangers in the World Series? Does that oh fit? man, you know it's early. Does that does that fit? <laughs> it's no, it's it's early. That's an awful lot of blue. Um, it's it's early, you know, right now. But yeah. I mean, if if you know, if I had to pick two teams right now, you know, I golly, you know, the Dodgers are missing a couple of pieces. They're missing, um, th- you know, they're missing the clubhouse. Personalities. They're missing that that guy oh, in the clubhouse. Yeah. The Giants, right. Right. you know, whatever it is, the Giants have it. The Giants have it in the clubhouse, and that's why they're so successful right. because they all get along they're and play little, together. Exactly. It's fun to you have jokes and pranks. And, and so, and but if I if I yeah. would pick if I would pick two teams, I you know I'm going to say the Royals go with go with the repeat in the American League. Wow. Um, you call and, a repeat? You call it out a repeat? Oh, man. It's hard not to like oh, those guys. Oh, you know? Man. And then, uh, you know, there's so many teams. The Blue Jays are good. You know, the Mariners are going to be better. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, and it's not. It's hard not to like the Astros and the Cubs. Baseball yeah. is yeah. in a great place right now with all the it young really talent. It, it, yeah. It really is. A lot of teams are right at the borderline. Right at the borderline. It's exciting. You know, the Diamondbacks one, one doing what they away. do. Yeah. You know, one the, out away, one player away. I mean, oh my God. I was like, I'm so sorry for Madden because I wanted to see him there. I want to see him win. I did. I mean, I, I was just so sorry for him. He's taken off. He did so much to the game. And then you got Dusty Baker in Washington, and what's not to like yeah. about that? I mean, look at the team he's got. Yeah. I mean, he's got probably, you know, the, one of the best players. You know, I don't know if he's the best, if Harper is the best. I mean, Trout and Manny Machado, but he's one of the best. You know, yeah. he's got pitching. I mean, the Washington Nationals should win the American or the National League East. You know, the uh, Mets are I, good, I, though, but. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I think I think they got rid of Papelbon, right? Did they? They yeah, they did. Okay. I'm so not sure. I can't gone. remember where he went, but I think he's gone. Yeah. Okay. So. So that, let's. That, it's really important to have a veteran president. In a, that, in absolutely. That so let's end with this. What was the best? Okay, uh, two part question. So what was the best advice that you would ever receive, and what advice would you give to the younger players today? Best advice I received is from my brother-in-law, who was the aerospace vice president, who says uh, that uh, $150,000 is nothing. It's your degree. I turned down the Cardinals uh, signing because I, I thought Bobby Winkles and Frank Cush were going to find the, the door for me to, to be successful, open the, the dream. So I went on to college, and the best thing I advise right now, kids, is get a degree and listen to every coach that you had and pick something apart from everyone, from your dad, your uncle, your grandfather, and everybody that's put time in to make you who you are because you're going to represent your community and your family for the rest of your life. And you'll always be remembered for what you did and who did it for you. And always go back and thank them for helping you. Always go back to that teacher, that coach, that fireman, that even the guy that, that talked bad and said you weren't going to be nothing, go back and say to him, 
Remember when you said, <laughs> I was gonna, you know, go back and say, thank you, you motivated me. I, you know, you could ignore them or you could just say thank you. I mean, I'll pray for you because I, you motivated me. And that makes you a winner in life. And then you want to really be tested by the big guy upstairs and not by the people here on earth. Right. And that's who you please. Once you please God, the Pope and his family, you're done. You just go out and have fun. Make life fun. Don't take it serious. It's not an audit, and you're not a, a firing squad. Keep it fun. Wow. Lenny, let's do this again. Okay. Dude, you, you, you are, you are awesome. And I, I am so glad that I, you know, I'm so glad. I mean, we've been friends on Facebook for a while and I've chatted with you a couple different times, but after watching, um, MLB's, uh, networks, you know, the most interesting man in the world, you know, and it wasn't, it, it, it had nothing to do with you being a major league baseball player for me. It had everything to do with the person you are and you know when you watch footage of you playing and just in living life you're different and you know you you go about it a different way you have fun doing what you do and you know thank you for taking time for us you know for us little guys up here in Oregon and uh, you know like I said let's have you back on the show soon Norman, you may not know this, but your show just went to 55 million people. You're going viral, buddy. You're going global. So we'll go global together. Just stay humble, okay? That hey, Brian, is... make, sure his head, make sure his head fits in the doorway, okay? I will try. <laughs> okay, God bless you. All right, hey, thank you very much, Lenny. Ciao. Good night to you. Good night to you. All right, we'll talk to you later. Once again, Mr. Lenny Randall, the most interesting <sighs> man in baseball. Man. Brian, what do you got to say? He was good. Um, you know, I I knew who Lenny Randall was. I have his baseball cards. He played for a long time, so I have lots of his baseball cards. Um, but it's good to see, hear a voice uh, on the person who, um, as you said, is very, very interesting. You know, and it, it was weird because, you know, sometimes I struggle with, with Clubhouse Chatter, with, with the show about wanting to get – the Hank Aarons and the Willie Mays and stuff like that. And I've got to kind of hold myself down. And that's not what Clubhouse Chowder is about. Clubhouse Chatter is about the passion. And Rodney Tafoya, you know, says it the best, you know, passion to the core. And that is what, you know, I'm about. And that's what we're about. And, um, you know, when I watched that show, I don't know if you had a chance to see it yet. I have. But, I mean, I he screamed. He screamed to me. It was like, Norm, you've got to have me on Clubhouse Chatter. You know, and it wasn't because he played 12 years in the major leagues. It was because he left a major league career to go play in Italy, you know, and doing what he does. You know, the guy wanted to be a comedian. He went out and did it. He might not have been very good at it, but he did. he went out and tried. You know, he cut that record for for Seattle when he was up in Marin. I don't know if you remember that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, he went out and did it. And that, and, that's the key. You, you know, know, why not live life to its fullest, go out, have fun, enjoy, and that's exactly what Lenny does, and he does a great job at it, and there's a reason he's relevant still today. Absolutely. So I'm going to ask you, Mr. Producer... Uh oh, I'm in trouble. What now. is your what is your take on the Pete Rose deal? Of course, Pete Rose, <laughs> um, they they did not lift the ban, and I'm okay with that. Okay, now people got to realize that you know just because Major League Baseball has a ban on you doesn't mean that the Hall of Fame has a ban on you. You know, Hall of Fame and Major League Baseball are two different things. Now, Pete Rose bet on baseball in every clubhouse minor and major league around the United States have the same poster up about gambling on baseball. And it it states, you know, rule number 21, as you've heard about it, you know, you gamble on baseball, you will be banned for life. Now, Pete Rose continues to bet on baseball and sports. And I think that's why he is not being reinstated. I agree with that. How about you? I have a hard time taking the personal um, interaction Pete and I had. Um, 
out of the situation. I'll, I'll be honest with that. Um, met him in the uh, casino in Vegas and saw how he wagered and um, actually tried to have discussions with him just, you know, as a, uh, a radio person, talking to a radio person, totally blew me off, but that's fine. Um, so I have a hard time, so I'll admit that. But I really think he should not be in there because he violated um, not only Rule 21, but I think the cardinal rule in baseball, do not bet on baseball. Absolutely. And not even as a player, but as a manager. That's right. where it really... Um, because he's making lineup changes. He may say he didn't do it, but he has the ability to, rather than being at first base or whatever, making a play here or there. But he has the ability as a manager to make those changes that affect his betting line. Did he do that? I don't know. Right. He had the opportunity. He bet. He, he violated the Cardinal rule. I think he stays out, um, and I hope he stays out. You know, and, and there is no doubt, there is no doubt as a player that Pete Rose – belongs in the Hall of Fame. There is there is no doubt he, no has, doubt. Great he has the numbers, you know, I mean, he he's he's the man. He's the all-time hits leader. I don't know if that's ever going to be broke. But you know, the fact that here we are what 20 20 years later, 25 years later since Giamatti um, imposed the ban, he's still he's still gambling on sports. You know, and I was watching a clip, and he, you know, he thinks, you know, I could do whatever I want. You know, I'm a grown ass man. I could bet on sports if I want. Okay, you know, then you are going to be banned from Major League Baseball, and I'm okay with that. Does he belong in the Hall of Fame? Absolutely, he has the numbers that belongs in the Hall of Fame. But and I don't have really, you know, um, a problem with him betting on sports now. He's not in the game. He's not managing a team or changing the way but when he was that's where the problem is I mean because it's legal it's legal for all of us to go out and gamble right. whatever we can do FanDuel or whatever DraftKings or all that crap but when you're the manager and you do it that's where you get in trouble I don't have really a problem with him doing it now but um, I think he, he should stay banned I think there's nothing he can do to get into the Hall of Fame or back into baseball and with that said Barry Bonds Mark McGuire Sammy Sosa, the guys who have been caught, Ryan Braun, they don't belong in the Hall of Fame either. Hard to argue against that. It really you, is. You know, if you cheat, if you cheat. But the problem yeah. is, and this could be a whole other show, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, save baseball. Absolutely. And McGuire has come clean right. for the most part. You know, and so, you know, I don't know. It's it's a it's a great argument. You know, Pete, my interaction with Pete Rose was was lunch, and he was a complete asshole. You know, talked about himself for an hour. And At least he I talked was, to you. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I want to get out of here. You know, and I got an autographed baseball out of the deal. It ended up fine, but I'm going to tell you, you know, my interaction with Pete Rose for an hour. In, in in California when I was working for Lancaster Jethawks was um, not positive. Kind of like me. I talked to his producer and his co-host for 10 minutes, and Pete ignored me the whole time. By the way, you want my autographed baseball? You can have it. <laughs> Mine says T. Norm, by the way. Does yours say T. Brian? No, no, no. I, I, I actually won it in a contest. Oh, okay. I kind of bummed that I won it. So. Mine says T. Norm, a great baseball fan. And so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hold on to that for the rest of my life. I mean, it's something that belongs in my baseball, you know, baseball collection. You know, I've got it. And, and that's kind of, that's kind of cool. You know, it's not as popular as my Dale Murphy one, but. Uh, I trade you. you. Know. Hey, Dale, if you're listening. Which I know it's a fat chance. Give me a call, man. I want to get you on the show again, and uh, you're the best. So I'm Norm. That's Brian. We are Clubhouse Chatter. 15 Days of Christmas comes to an end tomorrow morning about 6 a.m. Check it out. Gordy's Highway 30 Music Fest. VIP tickets are up, plus a couple of other things. We've had fun doing it, giving away shirts and interacting with the different... Um, people who on Facebook and Twitter and whatnot. 
Brian, you have YST coming up. Tell yes. us a little bit about it. Well, YST will break down, uh, well, Linfield's loss this past Saturday. Talk about that. Uh, we will also uh, talk about uh, what's going on basketball-wise uh, around the Northwest Conference and also the McMinnville uh, schools as well as Newburgh. So we got that coming up Saturday, 10 o'clock on AM 1260, KLYC. Also, go to SoundCloud. Type in KLYC or Brian Erickson. You got it there, too. Boom. So I'm Norm, that's Brian. We are sponsored by, hey, Christmas is coming up. Check them out, baseballisms.com. Speaking of baseballism, you know what the word of the year is? Clubhouse chatter. Well, besides that? What? Ism. Ism. I thought about baseballism when I heard there that this morning. There you go. Baseballism. Uh, I just gave away a $40 gift card to uh, Troy Palmer of Kimberly, Idaho. Troy was the winner, and I am proud to say that Troy was a neighbor of mine growing up. His uh, younger brother, Robin, was a year ahead of me in high school. Congratulations to Troy on winning that and some uh, Clubhouse Chatter Sway. Congratulations to all the winners. Your stuff will be getting to you. Um, Baseballisms.com. Check them out. Also by Chris Gazelle up there in Vancouver, Washington. Baseballdudes.com. To be the best, you must train like the best. Base by pros, Mitch Canham, the new manager for the Clinton, I think they are the Lumber Kings, I think think still, Uh, new manager over there in Clinton, uh, building an athlete's sports education, basebypros.com. And if you like my sweatshirt, my hoodie, we got shirts, Um, Clubhouse Chatter, you know, Mark Canham over there at MDM Designs does a great job. Thank you very much for your, your stuff. Mark Canham was the primary sponsor for Brian and Norm's 15 Days of Christmas. Also, we're uh, streamed live on yamhilltoday.com. And if you'd like to sponsor the show, shoot me an email, normbo18 at gmail.com. Let's talk. You know, I'd love to take this uh, thing, you know, worldwide, global, and uh, spread, the, spread the love of the game. You can find us on Twitter at Clubhouse Chatter 1T. We're on Facebook, Clubhouse Chatter with Norm. We're on iTunes, YouTube. We're also on MLB.com blogs. Check us out. I'm Norm. That's Brian. Hey, are we going to be back next Tuesday? It's so close to Christmas. Are we going to do a show? Sure, why not? We'll do All a right, Christmas we'll show. We'll do a Christmas there show. You go. So we'll put together a baseball a Christmas list for a baseball fan. Hey, guys, thank you for listening. Have a good day.